are entering the Secret Society World Broadcast. <laughs> I've seen some stuff, man. I'll tell you what, I ain't never going back. They're gonna have to drag me kicking and screaming. You wanna sing about the flowers? The 2027. They don't care about the powers. The 2027. Making through the tracks, the wrecking machine. T-A-L-L-P 101.5 Las Cruces on your FM dial. That was, uh, I think it was the Expats with 2027. This next song is going to be remembered by a lot of you Cruces heads from way back in the day. I'm sure you a lot of you jammed to it. Uh, when you were young and getting crazy, it's shark pants with Let out get up! Secret Society World Broadcast. Secret Society World Broadcast is the underbelly of the beast which lurks in the shadows of your FM dial. The great Las Cruces area knows no other greatness than that which is the Secret Society World Broadcast. Yes, uh, thank you very much. That was amazing, Count Bubula. Uh, Welcome to Secret Society World Broadcast, Episode 2, everyone. I'm in the studio by myself right now, but I'm going to try and dial up our good friend Tazu on the telephone and see if she can give us her all-important segment. And now for Tara Explains Whatever. My name is Tazu, and I want to talk to you about cleaning under your fingernails. And you don't really have to do it, and I think it looks good if you don't do it. But if you do do it, don't use water because water is a finite resource in the world and that's just uh, the man trying to get you to use more water to race into the destruction of this beautiful, beautiful planet that we all share. And that was Tara Explains Whatever. We 
wish I could have said what was on my mind. to be such rolling stones Catching up by telephone And leave a message
What you just heard was the Bohannons out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, doing a song called Goodbye Bill, which is about the legendary wobbly organizer uh, Joe Hill. He was put to death in the state of Utah, and uh, before he died, he wrote a last will and testament, and it's the poem that is most of the lyrics of the song. They finish it out with uh, his last telegram he wrote to Big Bill Haywood that says, There's no time for mourning, but to organize. It's beautiful. Before that, you heard uh, Black Diamond Heavies, also out of Chattanooga, fronted by a man named James Legg, and uh, he plays keys, and you know he plays a Rhodes with his right hand, a, a bass keys with his left, and he sings. And he's been touring around Europe as James Legg, and he's doing pretty good out there. They love him. Um, we're going to finish up with a song from Big Kitty and round out the Chattanooga Connection. This is a song called Magdalene, and it's, uh, you could say it's an alternate version of the gospel. When Jesus was a boy, he was my sailing friend. We sailed upon the sea of Galilee. Now, 
What a dream. Secret Society. World Broadcast. What are you all about? What are you like on the inside? Have you kissed a jellyfish? What are the ghosts that tickle you? Have you lost a limb? I want to get to know you. So welcome, welcome. I'm here to introduce a guest that we have in studio. She's a friend of mine of 17 years, and her name is Millie. But tonight we're going to call her Teacher Amelia. We're going to talk about her current profession and uh, the life that she's leading right now. Uh, So right now we are going to define you as a digital nomad, correct? Yes, that's correct. Digital nomad. That sounds so high tech and scary a little bit. Um, (laughs) And how long have you been considering yourself a digital nomad? Since May of 2018. So just this past May. Okay. Okay. And and what would you have defined yourself as prior to this? A uh, corporate packaging engineer. Uh, so what what is, what is that? What does that entail? Uh, many things. Material selection, logistics, testing, but all pretty much done from an office or the same building every day. Okay. And dealing- Maybe a little bit of travel, but... Minimal. Very restricted travel. Okay. And, and, and you were just creating foam packaging and cardboard packaging um more recently i worked for a food company so i was uh working mostly with paperboard for them okay cartons of food okay and you decided to leave this job for for to become a digital nomad what, what is this what is a digital nomad a digital nomad is somebody that can work uh anywhere in the world where there's high speed internet because you're making your money through the internet Correct, yes. Via the interwebs. Yes. That, that's great. And, and do you currently enjoy what you're doing? Yes, definitely. I have no regrets. All right, so you can do this from wherever. So where have your travels brought you so far? So I quit my, my office job in May, and then I went traveling around Eastern and Central Europe for five months. I hit eight countries. I don't know if I can remember them all, but I started <laughs> in Romania, Italy, Serbia, Austria, Germany, Czech Republic, Slovakia. Is that eight? <laughs> I, yeah, maybe. <laughs> and so what, what brought you to Romania? Uh, I chose Romania as my starting point. I had been in, in Romania for five, six days before on a vacation from my corporate job. And I noticed uh, the Internet is super fast. They're faster than the U.S. You can get unlimited data for five euros a month. And it's super beautiful in the town where I lived, Brashoff. Okay. Yeah. Great food, great people. So what are you doing with this high-speed internet? What are you doing online? Um, I'm having lessons either one-on-one or sometimes I have up to six students at a time. And they're all located in Asia. Well, the majority of them are located in Asia. And I could be anywhere. Teaching them English. Yes. And how did you, you weren't an English teacher prior to this, so how did you obtain the ability to be an ESL teacher? So most of the websites require a bachelor's degree, and they'll accept it in anything. Like mine is a BS in packaging, Mm. and um, they don't have any idea what that means, but (laughs) (laughs) they accepted it with a TEFLA certificate, which took 11 weeks. It takes 11 weeks to get. I did a two-week add-on so 13 weeks okay and and are you a hired as a freelancer on one website i'm a freelancer on another i'm a consultant okay so the freelancing website the students sign up for me and the consulting website i'm paired through an algorithm and or have you been able to pay your bills make it work Yeah, it's amazing, like, how little we actually need, especially on the road. People are very friendly. If you go out to restaurants in a lot of places in the world and you're an American, they'll give you the local cuisine to try. I mean, food also is much cheaper outside of the U.S., I've found. Okay. Cheaper than in Chicago. (laughs) Which is where you're from. Yes. Yeah. So my salary in Chicago... And living in Chicago, I would say the quality of life that I have now is better. I'm outside more, which is great. So this huge lifestyle change was totally worth it. 
Yeah, definitely. Because I went from working 40 hours a week with a three-hour daily commute Monday through Friday to I teach English online like 17 to 20 hours a week. Three hours And no commute. commute. Sometimes I just climb down from my loft bed in Chicago or get out of bed wherever city I'm in. So where were you most recently? I was in Spain and I was 50 meters from the Mediterranean Sea in this awesome apartment. So the, yeah, who who wouldn't want that to wake up to every day and then just make it work, leaving it that corporate beautiful. lifestyle. All right. Yeah. Um, so overall, would you say that this is a, a career that you might recommend for some people? Definitely, yeah. If you're passionate about the preserving the English language and, uh, I don't know. Learning about different cultures. Learning too. about different cultures, yes. Yeah, and getting to know people. Yeah, it's it's great to kind of There are many benefits. Connect, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, thank you so much for coming in and talking to us about it. It's so interesting to hear about the way that people can exist using technology and being able to survive and pay the bills and also travel and meet different people and talk to different people in different countries. So uh, thank you so much for sharing this with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Me! That's what you're all about. That's what you're like on the inside. You never kissed a jellyfish. Your ghost's name is Simon. Put your finger on a saw. I'm really glad I got to know you. This is Teacher Amelia, and you're listening to the Secret Society World Broadcast on KTALLP 101.5 FM, Las Cruces. Boy, it sure is getting weird in here, ain't it, Las Cruces? But that's the way we like it. I know you do, and I know I do, too. We're going to go ahead and revisit our featured artists for the time until they play their show here in Las Cruces. So let's get back with our good friend Sarah Shook and her band, The Disarmers, and play a quick song block. Here we go.
That was Sarah Shook and the Disarmers with Lesson. Before that, you heard her song Good as Gold, which is the first song off of her 2018 release years. I was doing some research to find something to tell you all about Sarah Shook and the Disarmers, and I came across this post that she made on social media, and I thought it was so good that I I figured if I just read it to you, it would tell you almost everything you need to know about her. So here goes. I quote, An article came out today entitled The Rise of Sarah Shook and the Disarmers. The opening paragraph contemplates the struggles of making it as a woman in the music industry. The author then proceeds to talk about my ex-boyfriend slash drummer and his career, crediting him in part for my success. While I feel like there are all kinds of ways to handle this, I just want to say this. This is the last show of a 17-day-long West Coast run. Kevin and I drove the van and trailer from Moncure, North Carolina to Denver, Colorado. In addition to endless load-ins and load-outs, shuttling from one gig to the next, never sleeping enough, and single-handedly running all our social media accounts, I write songs, I talk to fans, I play guitar and sing, I design album artwork, conduct phoners and email interviews, even when I'm completely exhausted, smile for selfies with folks, and generally work my tail off for little pay. Tomorrow, I'm waking up at 5 a.m. to drive my bandmates to the airport, then driving Tawny, the van and trailer, three 11-hour days back to North Carolina from Montana. If you want to know who gets credit for my success, as shocking as this might seem, it's actually not a man. It's me, a woman, relentlessly, incessantly determined to put in the work. Indomitable in my mission to live up to our full potential as a band. All the love and kindness and hopefulness in the world. Someday we'll get the hang of giving credit where credit is due, especially when the subject in question is a woman. Be good to each other out there. That's beautiful, because if you take the gender out of what she said, then you're left with the picture of a hard-working human being that's doing everything they can to manufacture their own destiny. But when you put the gender back into it, You realize that she's doing all of this while she's banging her head against that wall. That wall that tells her to smile more, wear a little bit more makeup, and she'll go a lot further in the industry. Sarah is a great artist. She's not a great artist because she's a woman or because she's locked in that struggle. She's a great artist because she works hard. And because she fills her space fiercely, with no apologies at all. And she'll be here March 19th to play for us, Las Cruces, at the Rio Grande Theater. We're going to finish up our featured artist set of Sarah Shook and the Disarmers with the the title track off of her 2018 release, Years. Hope you enjoy it, and we'll see you on the other side.
Secret Society World Broadcast. It's time for Secret Society World Broadcast News. Bing. Good evening. This is Brutus Recusus for SSWBN. Tonight's top stories. There was a massive run on Walmart ammunition departments in rural areas throughout the United States when a rumor was spread on an online Baptist newsletter that the spooky internet sensation Momo was instructing children to take away their parents' guns and send them postage paid to their local federal offices. One Walmart employee described the scene as a giant tub full of vanilla-flavored anger. In other news, a USPS delivery driver was assaulted by a mob of neo-Trotskyites in Ithaca, New York today. The mob beat him with sheaves of wheat while screaming, Hell, rain, sleet, or snow, Bolsheviks have got to go. Finally, the crisis in Gondwana land continues today as the continents see no hope of reconciling their differences. The Minister of Return says that if it weren't for these tectonic shifts in policy, the scattering may have been reversed. This has been Brutus Recusus for SSWBN. Be safe out there, all you humans. Signing off. <laughs> My goodness, what a trying time for the citizens of Gondwana land. We here at Secret Society World Broadcast have organized a Thoughts and Prayers Drive to benefit the relief efforts for the crisis in Gondwana land. Feel free to contact yourself and send your donations directly into the air. Secret Society World Broadcast. Queen Sheen's been there for the week.
just heard Mr. Gnome Ate the Sun, a Cleveland, Ohio duo featured on El Marco Records, a very talented duo. The first song in Queen Sheen's Mean Three Psych Out set was Ruby the Hatchet. The song is called Gemini. They're from New Jersey, and it was off their TP Records release called Planetary Space Child. The third song in this set is by Wind Hand. The song is called First to Die, and it's off their 2018 release, Eternal Return on Relapse Records.
for the week. Secret Society. World Broadcast. Well, everybody. We've come to the end of episode two. It's been nice. I'm gonna miss you. So we'll close it out with some AJJ. Ha 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 